after several slow news cycles, I take a two-week break from the show and immediately the Ocean Gate drama unfolds. This tiny submersible full of millionaires and billionaires imploded on its way to view the wreckage of the Titanic just a few weeks ago. Most interesting to me were the online reactions toward the passengers, many people seeming to gloat or even take pleasure in their demise. And I'm sure like the rest of the universe, you were following along these multiple days. It turns out that the submersible imploded, you know, just hours after heading down to the Titanic. But we didn't know that, or maybe some people knew that, but they weren't saying anything about it. But we didn't know that. We knew they had limited ox oxygen. And so it almost reminded me, uh, much more devastating, but it kind of reminded me of Balloon Boy 10 or 15 years ago. Some of you remember this. There was this giant weather balloon, and everyone thought someone's son was in there. And so literally, it was just news cameras panning the sky, following this balloon around, everybody looking up like, wow, just could not get enough of it. And it turned out that the whole thing was a hoax and the boy was never actually in the balloon. But this reminded me of just the intensity of almost a whole world watching this one thing, this countdown of how much oxygen could be left in there. And ultimately it was a, a total loss, implosion loss of, of every life on board and all these weird things started coming out, like videos of the company that runs a submersible showing that some of the equipment in there was not necessarily NASA-grade equipment. It was like pieces and parts from Camper World and off-brand PlayStation controllers, Logitech controllers. To, to that, That's how you drove the boat. And it just seemed kind of piecemeal. Other things came out like they weren't able to get the craft insured to go down anywhere near as deep as they were going. People weren't willing to take that risk. And of course, they um, you know disclosed certain parts of this. You signed your life away. And part of what you signed before you went down to try to see the Titanic was a statement that said, you know, you re you realize there's a very real risk of death. You know, so they covered their bases in that way. After it was confirmed that the submersible imploded, people, especially on Twitter, which I like Twitter, some of the funniest people in the world are on there, but also some of the worst people in the world are on there. And a real trend in the reaction to the implosion of the Ocean Gate submersible was people with an attitude of, well, that's what they get. Because they were wealthy, it was $250,000 to go down. Because these were millionaires, there was a billionaire and his son, and his son apparently didn't want to go on the trip, and his dad kind of made him, which is just devastatingly heartbreaking. There was a, a guy who's kind of a famous explorer, a couple of these explorers who are always pushing the boundaries where they go and seeing new things and doing new things. And there was a sense of like, well, that's what they get, you know? a bunch of rich idiots who just wasted their money. Uh, they, you know, they could have fed so many poor people with $250,000 and they just want to go, go down and look at the Titanic. Good riddance. You know, first of all, it, it goes without saying, it's just incredibly callous. Right. And the other side were people who were just generally heartbroken and seemed to ignore that, um, maybe prudence would have had them do a little more quality control before they got into the submersible. Um, Obviously, loss of life is just devastating. I want to make a case for exploration, though. And this idea that going down to see something that almost no one has seen. I mean, other than the people who were actually on the Titanic that sank, they saw the Titanic. It was a long time ago. Very, very few people have gone down and viewed this wreckage. Very interesting to me. Were it safe, it's something I would be very interested in doing. Now, when I saw the inside of that submersible, I'm out. So claustrophobic. Also, I barely have $250, much less $250,000. So don't forget, subscribe to the channel. I want to make a case for exploration. And I think exploration is actually in us when we're healthy. Uh, Genesis 128, this is the, the creative mandate for humankind in scripture. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Like God's first command to humans involved exploration. Go out and fill the entire earth. 
Adventurer is this call to go and do something new or see something new. And the great stories of scripture involve a call to adventure. Abraham, who became the father of the nation of Israel, the father of three of the largest religions in the world, um, Abraham started as this 70-year-old guy still living at home, still living on his dad's dime, not doing much with his life. God meets Abraham and calls him to adventure. Follow me to a faraway land. Doesn't tell him what the land is. Doesn't tell him the obstacles he'll face. And he ends up facing massive obstacles along the way. But that's all a part of the adventure. God comes to Moses. He has fled Egypt. He is just kind of content as a guy who is herding sheep. He calls him to adventure, to confront the seat of tyranny, the Pharaoh of Egypt, to call his people, the Hebrews, out of slavery, 400 years of slavery, and then to go on the adventure of a lifetime, which was fraught with distraction and fraught with danger. I mean, they had to cross through the parting of the Red Sea, walls of water that could collapse on them and kill them at any moment. They faced, you know, starvation and pit vipers and massive armies. We see right before they go into the promised land, they send 12 spies in. And 10 of the 12 are too scared to go. They think the people are too big. They think the people are too numerous. They don't think they're experienced enough. It's only Caleb and Joshua who are willing to go forward on the adventure that God had called them to. We are called to adventure. And I thank God for the explorers. And the same people who are sitting in the West, comfortable, affluent, tweeting, oh, these idiots who wanted to go on an exploration. This is what they get. You're sitting in the West with all this affluence and all of this technology because of explorers, because people set across on the adventure of a lifetime. People thought the earth was flat. The people who came over and settled the new world, their families thought they were going to just sail a boat off the edge of a flat earth. And a lot of people who set out in these boats made out of like wood and nails, a lot of them died. A lot of them died. A lot of explorers died. The original colonies, there were just 13 of us, and we were just on the East Coast. There was so much more of our land to explore. That exploration required adventure, and many, many people died exploring that new land where you're probably living right now, listening to this, tweeting about how stupid it is to go explore. And so, is a trip to go see the Titanic the most exciting or important form of exploration. It's not. But it has at its heart the same thing that drives people to new continents, the same thing that is trying to drive people to new planets, the same thing that drove us to the moon. A adventure can certainly lead to loss. That's always the risk. Adventure requires risk. Adventure can lead to loss. But the greatest loss of all might be having no adventures at all. And many people are living adventureless lives. Like the greatest adventure that you get ever in your life is just searching, searching hours, hours, hours until you find that one TikTok that you can finally send to seven friends and then they click on it and then they do a laughing emoji. And that's the adventure of your life. And you're called for more adventure than that. You're called to do something great, to do bold things, even on a daily basis, to do bold things, to have bold conversations, to love your family in bold and risky and exciting ways, to start something new, to be courageous at work, to actually improve the things around you. We are called to adventure, and many of us are called to exploration, even just the exploration of new ideas or, or, or new systems. We have this inside of us, and so many of us have doled all of that through just convenience and affluence and comfort. The people who went down to see the Titanic, they knew they were doing something very dangerous, and they knew they were doing something very uncomfortable, and it did cost them their lives. Now, specific to this Ocean Gate mission, it sounds like were they to look at all of the factors involved, there is a case to be made it wasn't the most prudent thing to do. Proverbs 8.5 says, learn to be shrewd, you who are inexperienced, develop common sense, you who are foolish. A few verses later, it says, I, wisdom, this is the personification of wisdom, share a home with prudence and have knowledge and discretion. What does wisdom have? It has prudence, knowledge, and discretion. 
Um, we must exercise prudence. We must have discretion in what we are or are not willing to do. We just got back from Breckenridge and we did a lot of risky things. And I was the driving force on a lot of these. Um, I want my my sons to be adventurers. I want them to take risks. I want my wife to take risks with us when it's appropriate. Uh, we went to the Royal Gorge in Colorado and we crossed on a gondola hundreds and hundreds of feet just dangling, kind of shaking on a rope. And if you're afraid of heights, um, it really was quite nerve wracking, but we did it and we were better for it. We went whitewater rafting, class four rapids, some very serious rapids. And it was Katie and the boys, both the boys first time whitewater rafting. And it was amazing. You get to the end of it and you did something. You did something more than scroll through Instagram that day. You went on an adventure, but it was prudent. I've been whitewater rafting many times. I, I have been on gondolas and know the stability of those structures. And so that is the balance. A call to adventure, but not a call to foolishness. A, a call to exploration, but exploration through the lens of prudence. And more than anything, I think we just need to be able to come to situations with a more nuanced read. Were these just uh, elitists who deserved everything that they got, just foolish elites? Were these just courageous explorers? Um, or were they a mix of all, a son who didn't want to be on there, an explorer who was looking for one more adventure, wealthy people who love James Cameron movie Titanic. We don't know. What I do know is adventure can lead to loss. There is risk in life and a life worth living will involve risk. But the greatest loss of all might be having no adventures at all.